With praise. Come on, lift your hands. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise. Hey, glory. With the heart of thanksgiving, oh, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With my hands, with my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise. Come on, come on. With the heart of thanksgiving. when I come to church. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. Come on, walk like this. We're going to be one big choir today. The victory is ours as we sing unto Jesus. He rejoices when we give worthy praise. With the shout and the dance Because the devil is defeated Our God is worthy to be free hey, yeah. The victory The victory is ours as we sing our He rejoices, rejoices when, when we give worthy praise with the shout and the dance. Shout and a dance because, because the devil, devil is our, God. our God, is worthy to be praised. 
Jesus bled and died. Jesus bled and died for our iniquity. His grace and His mercy. His grace and His mercy. Pay the price for me. Oh, how I love Him! How I love Him! How I love Him! Yes, our oh, God. God is worthy to be praised. All over the building, the victory is ours. The victory is ours as we sing. As he, we rejoices sing as he rejoices when we, we give a worthy praise. praise. With the shout and a dance. The shout and a dance because the devil is dead. Our God is worthy to be praised. Jesus' blood and died. Jesus' blood and died. For our iniquities and his grace. His grace and his mercy. Pay the price for me. Everybody shout, shout. This is my part. Come on. Everybody dance. I know y'all got it in your feet. Everybody dance. Put the devil up under your feet. Dance. Hey. Dance. Dance. Come on. Everybody lift those hands. Lift those hands. Raise the roof in the house this morning. Lift those hands. That's all you gotta do. Lift your hands above your trials. Lift your hands above your tribulation. Lift your hands. Come on, this is my point. Everybody clap, 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 clap. Put those hands together. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Yes, I love him. I really, really love him. Yes, I love him. I really, really love him. Yes, I love him. Really, really love him. Shout! Shout! Everybody lift your voice and shout! Shout. He's worthy. Give him a shout. shout. Listen. Oh. I'm going to shout hallelujah to the King of Kings. Shout hallelujah to the Prince of Peace. Shout hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Shout hallelujah on one accord. Shout hallelujah. 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 Booyah, kabooyah, 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 kabooyah. Everybody shout! Shout! Oh yeah! Everybody shout! Shout! Oh! Shout! Shout! shout. Listen! Let's give him glory! 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 Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah!
on and shout. Come on and shout. shout. Hallelujah. Yeah, high high. Your high high. Yes, yes, the He's under my feet. Lift those hands. hands. Clap your hands. Somebody told me hallelujah was the highest praise. Every now and then you have to come with the hallelujah. Because God deserves all of our praise. He deserves all of our worship. Even, and even sometimes when you don't even feel like you got a worship inside of you or you got a praise inside of you because you may be heavy on the inside, but sometimes you just got to praise your way through. So let's crank that up. Let's just, let's just. Just clap your hands. I gotta shout hallelujah to the King of Kings. Shout hallelujah to the Prince of Peace. Shout hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Shout hallelujah on one Shout hallelujah. 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 Booyah, kabooyah, 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 kabooyah. Hey! He's right! the pain. Everybody lift your hand. Everybody lift your hand. Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Yes, I love him. I really, really love him. Yes, I love him. I really, really love him. Yes, I love him. I really, really love him. Booyah, kabooyah, 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 kabooyah. Everybody shout. Everybody shout. So, hey. Everybody shout. So, come on. Dance. Dance. You got the victory. Do your dance. Dance. Put your feet on the floor. Come on, I see you, Tata. Put your feet on the floor. This. Hey, this. Hey, hey. this. Come on, everybody, let's raise the roof. Lift your hands. Lift those hands. Lift them, lift them. Lift them, lift them, lift them. Lift those hands. Lift them, lift them. Lift them, lift them, lift them. You should have been dead, but lift them, lift them, lift them. In your grave, but lift them, lift them, lift them. Yeah. Lift those hands, lift those hands. I said, lift those hands. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your hands together. Bless the name of the he's Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. 
for the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Yeah, I feel, I feel that right there. The name of the, come on, bless the name of the Lord. Because when I call on the name of Jesus, I feel a little bit better. When I call on the name of Jesus, my burdens begin to be lifted. When I call on the name of Jesus, demons begin to triple. That's what I came to lift up his name. Is there anybody here that came to lift up the name of the Lord? Oh, I got one battle for you. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. I'm dancing because he's under my feet. Who's under my feet? It's the enemy. Can I tell you something? You've won again. The victory is yours again. So shout, dance, praise, because you won again. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I'm trying to move, but there's something that's in me right now. There's something that's messing with my spirit right now. There, there, there's something that's messing with me. And here it is. When I think about the goodness of Jesus. Hold on. I, I pulled up this morning and I had a morning conversation with my mother and we began to talk and my mother began to, to cut loose she said thank you Lord for an answered prayer answered prayer that shout right there my mom was letting me know she prayed for this day that the Lord wouldn't consume me but that he'll let me live out my destiny I don't know about you but I thank God that when I almost aborted my destiny, the Lord sent grace and mercy to cover me. Oh. I guess I'm by myself, but 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 you just got to oblige me because there's something in me. Because when I pulled up this morning, something told me you should have been dead. Something reminded me that I don't deserve to be here. And so I don't know about you, but when I think about that, all I got to do is say, thank you, Lord. Is there anybody here that just got a, a thank you, Lord, for allowing me one more day? trying to behave myself because there are guests here so I'm trying to behave myself Zephora but you wasn't there when he saved my soul
Can I just get 30 seconds? Every now and then. You're overwhelmed by his glory. And I'm going to take time and, 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 and say this. Every now and then you ought to have a reflection moment on your life. Every now and then you ought to just think about how you don't deserve to be where you are. And see, I made a mistake because I went too far. And the further I went, all I saw was his hand keeping me. And it's something about knowing that you you are you are being kept by God. And that no matter what I've been through in my life, it did not deter God from allowing me to fulfill the purpose in my life. But what it did do was it produced a testimony. And so I don't know about who I'm talking to today, but I feel like I'm crying not just for myself, but for somebody else. And so here it is. I want to let you know you ought to just be glad that you're still walking in your purpose. That no matter what you've been through, no matter what, you, what detour you took, he still allows you to see your purpose. And so that's why sometimes tears begin to roll down my eyes. Because I know something. He kept me. And so I'm just glad that he kept me. I'm trying to move, but I feel like I got to minister to somebody right there. That when you felt like it was all over, and you felt like you couldn't take life anymore, and you wondered how you make it through that tough time, but I just want to remind you that he kept you. But then can I give you a secret? He's keeping you. So I just, I, whoo, God Almighty. We'll continue with our worship. trying to move Fred but it's something got a hold of me 
I just want you to do something. I just want everybody, while, while they minister, I just want you to lift your hands. And I just want you to just close your eyes. And I just want you to worship him. our worship and, and giving at the end. Go ahead, get your Bibles. There's a word from the Lord. We're we we going to go straight to the word. Yes, sir. Because I feel something. I, I feel I, I, I feel something. I, I, I feel something. Come on, get your Bibles. Let's go to um, let's go to Matthew 4. 
say Matthew 4 chapter. Let's begin. I read chapter 1. I'm going to help all of us with something. You can't have intercessors on the parking lot walking and praying. <laughs> and you can't have people in the house of God praying and his presence not be in the house. <laughs> I wish somebody would catch that. You, you can't have intercessors and praying and we're praying for the Holy Spirit and not expect him to show up. Let's go to St. Matthew. Let's go to St. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. And then we're going to read all the way to 11. And then Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 through 16. Reading from the Living Translation of the Bible to all of our virtual sanctuary guests, we welcome you today. I wish you was you could be here today to experience what we're experiencing, but I'm praying that you experience the same thing that we're experiencing in house at your house. And my prayer today is that there will be a word for you. And my prayer is that we will be able to worship at a later date and time. Come on, can we thank God for them? Thank God for our virtual sanctuary. Do me a favor before we get the word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want everybody to get you got your smartphone. I want you to share this. Uh, on your Facebook, on your Insta, on your wh on whatever device, I want you to share. Uh, go on our Facebook Live now, and I want you to share it. And this is what I want you to say: There's a word for you. That's what I. That's what I oh, I see some. Okay. <laughs> I want you to share it. And I want you to say, "There's a word for you." Come on, do that real quick. Come on, share it. I need some share warriors. I need some share warriors. All right. While, we, while we're doing that, I want to thank God for First Lady. Thank God for my lovely wife. I thank God for her, for her prayers. We thank God for Mother Libby, our junior mother. We thank God. We, we thank God for her. Uh, thank God for all my children. Um, all right, let's go. Chapter 4, uh, Matthew. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. I'm going to say it again. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the Scripture says, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scripture says he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on his stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Well, Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away and the angels came and took care of Jesus. Hebrews, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 14 through 16. So then, since we have a high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours, understands our weaknesses for he faced all of the same testings we do yet he did not sin so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most 
we're continuing our series, allow me to reintroduce myself. This is volume four, and I want to title this one, He Knows. He Knows. You may be seated in the presence of God. That's what I want to, to talk about. He Knows. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, O oh God, for, for the presence that is felt in this place. We honor you. We reverence you. Now, God, we pray now that you will sit the self and selfishness down in me. And, Lord, you arise. Speak a word to and through me as your living and willing vessel. God, I thank you. Out of all you could have chosen, you chose me. Now, God, bless you. It's your way to congregation. Give them ears to hear, heart to receive, and the mind to do. In Jesus' name, amen. He knows. Somebody say that. He knows. For the last few weeks, we have been in our word, um, and we have been um, diving deeper into the word and to our series. Allow me to reintroduce us, uh, myself. It is, it is a word that we, um, this series, a deeper dive um, into Jesus' life because um, what it is sometimes that we forget um, that he, it was more than just a baby that was born of a virgin and the man that died on the cross and was raised on the third day. And so what we've been doing these last few weeks has been deep, diving deeper into his ministry and into his life. And so on Wednesday, uh, in Bible study, there was a nerve uh, that was struck in me uh, when we visited a certain scripture. And the Lord said, I want you to deal with that a little deeper. And so on today, we want to dive into a theme a little deeper. Here it is. I want to let you know that um, as a father, um, I take my job very serious. Amen. And I, um, I, I'm finding myself with a, with a 16-year-old, almost a 17-year-old. I'm finding myself uh, very so often have to explain myself to my child that well, she'll understand that I know the life that she's walking in right now. I find myself uh, having to explain myself even harder, and I'm like, man, Lord, I didn't just, I wasn't just born last night. I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night. And for some odd reason, my daughter feels like I don't know. For some odd reason, my daughter feels like I, I, I don't know what it means to, to have feelings for the opposite sex. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You know, for some odd reason, I feel like when I say things now, and I, y'all, now mind you, I'm only 34. First lady is 30, oh, Lord, 37. First lady is 37. I had to do the math right quick. We still young. But to her, she feel like we 50 years old. <laughs> she, 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 she feels like that we're so attached that we don't know the life that she's going through. She feels like that, 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 that what we went through is not the same thing she's going through. She, she, she feels like peer pressure just happened a few days ago. Y'all better help me here. And so I have this hard time trying to tell her, listen, the reason why God gave you a father and a mother is because you need to have a point of reference. And so the point of reference is we have failed in some of the ditches that's out there in the world that you that you go you going to flirt with every now and then. And we fell in those ditches to let you know those ditches may look good, but when they get in there, they don't feel good. And so here it is, what I'm trying to let her know, that God gave you a mother and a father to experience life before you so that we may know how to, oh Lord, how to get through different circumstances. That that's in the natural, so shall it be in the spirit. 
here it is, what I came to do from God. God says, I need you to tell my people about my son who came here, but he came to experience the same life that you're experiencing right now. Here it is. Can I be honest with you? We, we have Jesus who came down from the earth. He came down from heaven into the earth and put on human flesh. Y'all, we talking about the king of kings put on nasty flesh, sinful flesh. He put it on, catch this, so he can know what it feels like. Why you say, well, why, pastor, why would he put it on so he can know what it is? Because he wants to know for those that he shall minister to, that how does it feel like so he knows exactly what they're going through. So here it is. Let's get into the text. The text says that here it is at this particular text, at this particular time, Jesus is led by the spirit to be tempted. And y'all, can I just be honest with you? I, I kind of dealt with this and battled with this to the preachers here. I kind of, I kind of, this kind of frustrated me when I read this text. I said he was led by the spirit to be tempted. He didn't fall into temptation, but he was led to the spirit to be tempted. Here it is. Oh, boy, y'all better help me here. It was an intentional move to be led by the spirit of God to be tempted. Here it is. The Bible says he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, y'all, I'm going to be honest with you. I, the longest I've done was 21 days. Seven days was cool. Fourteen days got a little rough, but around 16, 17, my nerves got a little bad. <laughs> I, had to, I had to pray for a little bit more patience because I was getting snappy because I was hungry. But here the Bible says that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible tells us clearly that as he was fasting, that the enemy, Lord, have mercy. During the time the devil came and said to him. So during the time while he is fasting, during the time while he's seeking God, here comes the enemy. Here it is what I want to give to you. First empowerment key today. I want, I want to give to you today is every attack of the enemy is calculated. Every attack of the enemy is calculated. It is an attack that is predetermined. It is an attack uh, that is not just off the whim. But it is an attack that is deal with, 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 with knowledge of knowing who he's coming against. So he attacks at the right opportune time. Here it is. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't come visit Jesus when he had his full strength. Now, now I'm going to give you the warning. This is a talk back church, so you can talk back to me. <laughs> so, so he doesn't go when he is at his full strength, but he comes to him while he's dealing in the fast and he becomes weak. And so here it is. I want to let you know something that you must be wise when you're dealing with the enemy. Because you must understand something that he likes to deal with us when we are at the most vulnerable state in life. Y'all, I want to help you with something. I want to help you with something because you're wondering why the enemy always comes at this particular time, at this particular season. It is because he knew when to strike. He didn't strike you when, 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 when you had a job and the bank was full. He didn't strike you when the bills was paid. He didn't strike you, but he struck you when you was at your most vulnerable state. He struck you when the money was funny and the change was strange and the credit couldn't get it. He, oh Lord have mercy. He comes to you because catch this, you have an enemy who studies you. So here it is what I want to do. I want to give, I want to help you today. If you have an enemy that studies you, you need to be the study of your enemy. We get so holy as thou. And feel like he not coming. It's not the matter of if. It's the matter of when. 
And so here it is. What you need to do, what I'm trying to raise, is some warriors that are studious. Here it is. When I was in the military, we used to have what you call an intel brief. And in the intel brief, they will let you know exactly what to expect when you go to a certain location. Here it is. The reason why we were able to get the intel is because there were people who specialized in being in these enemy camps and getting close and setting up certain satellites so that we may smile, spy on the enemy and know when attack is imminent. Here it is what I need you to do. I'm trying to raise some spies in here. <laughs> that while the enemy is casting out you, you casing out him. What does that mean? See, here it is what you have to understand while we do these intel and we know where he's, where he's liable to strike. Catch this. Then those areas that are weak, we should those things up. And so here it is what you must do in order. You got to not just study your enemy, but you need to study yourself. And to study yourself, you need to be honest with yourself because there are some things in your life that you'd like to lead people on that you're not struggling with, but you really are struggling with. Matter of fact, the struggle is so real, it almost caused you not to make it into the house today, not even to log on to Facebook. But I thank God he gave you enough strength to crawl through the struggle and log on and come to the house of God because I want to tell you something. It's people that are dealing with real demons. Come here, Livy. Come here. I'm going to make this thing live for you because I'm going to walk this thing for you. Now, Livy, come on. Come on up here. Livy is about 90 pounds. She's solid. Get on my back. Hop on. This is how we came into the house of God today. Get comfortable. We're going to preach a while. This is how we came into the house of God. We came into the house of God carrying our own weight. But then we was carrying some other weight that we picked up. That we should have never picked up. And now we're carrying weight that is so heavy. And now catch this, y'all. I can't walk like I want to because I got an extra 90, 95 pounds on my back. Because that's how some of us came into the house of God struggling. And we try to tell people, I'm fine. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm blessed. No, you're not blessed. You got a whole weight on your back. Won't you tell somebody, I got some weight. Help me. Oh, God, I feel a shift about to happen right now. That's why I sensed it. That's why I was heavy this morning. I wasn't heavy because of me. It was somebody that was carrying weight. The Lord allowed me to feel that weight so we can deal with that weight. I came to free you today because you're carrying extra weight. And today you can't be used the way God wants to use you because you're limping over, because you're hunching over, because you can't walk the way he wants you to walk because you got some weaknesses and some things that have creeped up on your back and they're weighing you down. But I came to day with the keys to unlock the chains that have been holding you for so long. With weight. And see, this is what we do with it. We adjust it. Oh Lord, this thing going to preach today. We, we adjust the weight so that so that we can carry it just a little bit longer. We lift it up. Yeah, that's better. So now I can carry it and I can be able to manage it. But here's the thing. Instead of you coming to the altar and dropping it, this is what you do. You come to the altar. You cry out to God. But then you pick up that same weight and go back to the chair. Jesus is led. Sister Benita, he's led. He's fasting. And the enemy comes to tempt him while he's weak. But here it is what I love the response of Jesus. He goes right to the area where he knows there's a need. He said, turn them stones into bread. Them Cheddar Bay biscuits. 
that bread, that cheesecake bring out to you. That good, hot, homemade mama's biscuits. Turn it into some bread. But see, what Jesus does is, stay right there, don't go nowhere. What Jesus does is, is that Jesus, oh God, he begins to quote the word to him. Because I believe that the word says, he said like this, people do not live by bread alone. But by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And I want to let you know today that you have to understand something. That when you're in this season of your life, praise is not the only weapon you should have in your forte. You need to have the word of God. Because I believe they told me that the word is, is, is the sword. And so when you have the word, you got to know how to cut. And so here it is. The problem is, is when you know the word, you know the truth, and you can no longer be persuaded by the lies. That's my second empowerment key. Go ahead, get your pen and paper out. And come on, let's write this down. When you know the word, you know the truth, and you can no longer be persuaded by the lies. Here, in the, here it is. Knowing the word holds you accountable. Knowing the word holds you accountable. Why I say that Psalms 119 and 11 says, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Here it is. I take the word of God. I meditate on the word of God. But then I let the word of God seep in my pores and be with me. So catch this. As I know the word of God, I know his truth. And I know where I should walk and where not to walk. The reason why you walk in and, and, and walking in areas and getting your head knocked in is because you don't know the word of God. And so here it is. It holds me accountable, but knowing the word sets you free and keeps you free. Lord, have mercy. Can I preach the way I feel today? Knowing the word sets you free and keeps you free. John 8 and 32 says it something like this. The truth shall set you free. And so here it is. When you know the word of God, you can walk in the freedom and the liberty of God. That's why I'm trying to raise some people who know the word of God. I don't want you in here shouting and bucking and sweating, but you don't know the word of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can't even find Genesis. And Genesis is the first book of the Bible. We have to, in this season, we cannot be so blind while worshiping God. There's an enemy. Can I warn you? He was on the parking lot this morning. Matter of fact, he's sitting beside you right now. You better watch out because he may be right next to you. Yeah, go ahead and check your room. Look at your name. Make sure there ain't the enemy right there. You have to understand something. That the enemy knows where to find you. Know how to find you. But I got the word of God. I got to adjust that weight again. Because I'm carrying something. I hope this thing going to live for you. Here it is. I need you to understand something. That Jesus is being tempted. And every time he tempts him, he gives him another word. Every time he tempts him, he gives him another word. Y'all, I got to do this because the Spirit is something. Y'all noticing how Livy is holding on. And she got me right at the neck, right? Yes. <laughs> See, here's what happens when you carry the weight that you're not supposed to. That that weight will begin to choke you. And begin to cut off your airways that you can no longer breathe no more. See, here it is. I need to understand if you don't deal with the weight, the weight gonna deal with you. If you don't deal with what's fighting you, where you're weaker, it's gonna deal with you. It's gonna cut off your life supply and end up killing you. But I plead the blood of Jesus over your life right now that today you'll be set free. I thank God I ate my Wheaties this morning. This ain't no joke. Scroll up for me. Scroll up. See? See what happens when you get the weight? You get comfortable with the weight. 
Oh, Lord, this is going to teach today. You get comfortable with the weight. When you, you get comfortable with something you ain't supposed to get comfortable with. Lord, have mercy. Talk, Holy Spirit. And so here it is. I need you to understand that he was led by the Spirit. Stay right there. Drop off for a minute. So this is what we do. We take a break. And instead of being free, we put it back on. Here it is. I need you to understand something. Stay right there, wait. Here's what you have to understand something. That you have to understand that Jesus is tempting him. Jesus, no, Jesus is being tempted by the devil. He's being tempted. He's being, but catch this, every time he says the word, but this is what I want to let you know, that after a while, that, the, that, that while the last word, after the third time, the Bible says that he left him. Because you have to understand something, that the enemy is persistent. But as long as you keep giving him word, giving him the truth to it, he will resist. I believe somewhere in, in the word it says, resist the devil and he will flee. And so here it is, you have to understand that you can't be weary in your, weary in your well-doing. Because he's an enemy that is persistent. He's the enemy that will keep knocking. But here's what I want you to do. As he's persistent in his attack, I want you to be persistent in your prayer life. Persistent in your word that every day you want to have a devotional every day you want to have about 15 to 30 minutes of devotional time of quiet time with God that God will begin to minister you and speak to you and help you with your day that's why some of our days are so jacked up it's because how you start your day you want to start your day with prayer you want to start your day preparing catch this because when you go into prayer you go to the armory I got, some, I got some people who used to be police officers. You used to go to the armory. But why? Because when it was time, you had to load up your weapon. You can't get in the car without your M9 and without your rifle. You got to make sure you armed up. And what's happening is we're leaving the home with all our armor. When you wake up, you want to start with prayer. You want to get you a devotional. Because then catch this, when you get to work, you'll wonder why your attitude is so great. And you saying good morning to everybody. You ain't even had a cup of coffee. It's because you had your armory. You went to the armory and got your weapons in the morning. You'll wonder why you can deal with a boss who hates you and knows they hate you. It's because I came, I went to the armor this morning. And while you grabbed hate, I grabbed love. Here it is. He went up to the mountain to be tempted. Somebody ask you right now, why in God's green earth would a man go up to the mountain to be tempted? It was because, catch this, the tempting was about us and for us. It's my third empowerment key. The tempting was about us and for us he went to the tempting not because of himself but it was because he knew that there was going to be some people that he came for to save that he came from the snatch from the hand of the enemy and so catch this I want them to be able to know Lord have mercy what it looks like to be tempted and to come out let's go to Hebrews somebody say Hebrews Let's go to Hebrews. We got some heavy lifting to do in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 says this. It says, so then since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. We have a high priest. We have an intercessor. We have somebody who's on our behalf. And the Bible says, let us hold firmly to what we believe. Because I know this one thing, that I serve a Jesus, I serve a God who sent his son into this world that he may know exactly what I'm dealing with. But then verse 15 says, and I love this one, verse 15, this high priest of ours understands, Lord have mercy, our weaknesses. I got to get comfortable right there because this thing about to get good. He understands our weaknesses. He doesn't just understand our strength, but he understands our weaknesses. He understands our daily struggle. He understands what, what has creeped upon us. He understands it. 
You can't understand something you've never been in. That's why some of us have a hard time relating to certain people because you haven't been through certain things. But you know what? That's why God reminded me. That's why I've taken you through certain things. So as a shepherd, you may be able to identify with your sheep. Lord, have mercy. That's why I allowed you to go through certain things so that you can identify with the people that we're trying to seek and to save and to train and to sin that we can say, I know what you're going through. I've been through it myself, but guess Guess what? I came out. I came out he says this. He says this. That right here, he says, for he faced the same testings. We do, yet did not sin. Let's deal with that. He says, for he faced all the same testings. We do, yet he did not sin. Now, why would they say that? Why, would, why is it important for the writer to say, yet he did not sin? You trying to make us, you trying to make us feel bad? No, what he's trying to do is say this. Everything that you've been through, I've, I've, I've gone through it. Everything that you're finna go through, I've already gone through it. But here it is, I beat it. I defeated it. So here it is, you have a point of reference. To know that the weight that is on you, I'm sorry, that the weight that is on you, you can be able to let it go and free yourself. To know that those weaknesses, those temptations, those areas where you fall subject to, to let you know you can fight through it. Lord have mercy. In other words, where he wants to let you know that this battle is winnable. Oh, I wish somebody caught that. What he wants you to know, Freeman, is that it's a winnable battle. Why can you say it's a winnable battle, Pastor? Let's go here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I'll read it for your hearing. It says the temptations in your life are no different from what others have experienced. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, it's already tipping in your favor. Lord, have mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want you to do that. I know you got masks on to be socially distant, but just look somewhere down your road and say, it's tipping in your favor. No, 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 no. See, you said it all nice and cute, but I need you to encourage somebody because you don't know what they came in. You don't know the weight they carried in this morning, but I need you to look down your row and say, neighbor, it's tipping in your favor. No, 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 no. Y'all ain't doing it for me. Y'all not doing it. I need you to encourage somebody down your road because there is life in your tongue and I need you to speak life to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, it's tipping in your favor. Somebody should have shouted right there because somebody is going through. But I just want to give you that word. It's already tipping in your favor. The scale is already tipped in your favor. Before you jumped in the battle, the scale was already off cue. Before you jumped in the ring to fight him, the scale was already tipped in your favor. Before you decided this was a battle that you was going to fight, the scale was already tipping in your favor. Oh, now, yeah, I got, I got to finish this. I need you to understand something that this is he says he says it's not something that you can't stand but catch is when you are tempted yeah. I'm gonna get ahead in these rows right here when you are tempted when you are he said catch this there's a door
there's a door. Thank you. Help me preach. There's a door. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Bob, 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 I feel that right there. There's a, open that door again. There's a door. 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 There's a door that's already prepared for you. Walk in it. Walk in the door. There's a door. I'm trying to behave myself. But I just started shouting because the door. Every now and then you got to shout for the door. Sometimes the door is not for a new job or promotion. But it's a door out. Oh, have mercy. Oh, have mercy. Ah! Ah! Here it is. I need you to understand the intentionality of God. That God says, I would allow you to be tempted. But I'm always going to have a door for you. To walk out of and escape through. And so here it is. This is what I need you to do. Stop complaining about being tempted. But when you're in tempted, just look at this. When you see the door, just start praising God. I praise God for every door. But y'all, let me help you with something because I got to close. What happens, Pastor, when I refuse the door? Because let me tell you something. There were some doors, Reverend Nelson, I decided not to go out of. Oh, Pastor. God, let's be real. There's a few doors he prepared. I said, no, I'm going to stay a while. And let me, because this, this feel like it's going to be good to me. And I'm going to tell you why I lingered. I started screaming because I said, I want the door now. Lord, have mercy. Because it looked good in the beginning. It looked appetizing. But when I decided not to go out the door, it grabbed me. Come here, grab me. Grab, no, grab this. Grab hold of, no, grab. There you go. Now, I can't get to the door because it got a hold of me. I can't get to the door because I decided not to get to the door. But when I decided to stay and grab the hold of me and stay the hold of me, and it would allow me to get to the door. But then I do, I do believe it says, that's why you ought to come to the throne boldly. Keep holding me tight. That's why I say, so if I can't get to the door, Lord have mercy, I'm going to the throne. I told y'all it gets good. Verse 16 said, that's why you come to the throne boldly and catch this where the throne is. So now, come on, now that I have the weight holding me, I can't get to the door, but I can get to the throne. He said, that's why I come to the throne boldly. But catch what's going to wait you, going to wait for you at the throne. It won't be judgment. It won't be, I gave you a door, you didn't walk in. But he says, there you find grace and mercy. There you'll find grace and mercy. There you'll find grace and mercy. And then catch this. Here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. Get the way. Get the way, oh Lord. Here comes Jesus to get the way and take the way off of me. And now, right now, I'm free. Can I breathe the way I feel? I'm trying to help somebody to let you know if you can't get to the door, get to, get to the floor, come to it, boldly, 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 and say, Father, I stretch my hands unto 
to thee no other help do I know if thou withdraw thyself from me where shall I go and I I, I, I shall find grace and mercy grace is his unmerited favor grace is his unmerited favor I don't deserve it but then mercy it cancels out the judgment that I should receive anybody here that's grateful for his grace and his mercy is there anybody here that's grateful for his grace and his mercy I said is there anybody is there anybody is there anybody that's grateful if you're grateful I said if you're grateful and you're not to me get to your feet and say God thank you for your grace and your mercy thank you for your grace that covers me your mercy your mercy your mercy your mercy your mercy 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 is covering me mercy is covering me grace thank God for his grace for his grace and his mercy I told the leaders that serving God and seeking God is dirty work. So this morning I thought about putting a suit on. But the Lord said, no, today you got to get dirty. That's why I put my fatigues on. Because I came to war today. You know why I came to come to war with? I came to war with the enemy because in the spiritual realm the Lord began to deal with me that the enemy is messing with God's people so as a shepherd I don't play about that if you go through come here first lady first lady got a stomping boots on today She got a stomping boots because as we unite and we're together, when y'all go through, you know what we do? We go on our knees and we call out names. We call out names and say, Lord, wherever they are, let your mercy blanket on them and cover them. Y'all, I'm telling you something. It's nothing like knowing that Jesus knows. And so here it is, but I want you to understand something. You got to start going to the throne. See, because I, 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 I'm glad this thing was illustrated because when you go to the throne, he comes to take the weight. But catch this, it's not until you're willing to give it up. Go ahead, go ahead. Give me, give me a couple minutes, I'm, I'm going to deal with that. When you go to the altar and you're willing to give it up, then he'll take it. 
but he won't take it until you give it. The Bible, he's a, he's a gentleman. And he gives us choices. He's a free will God. And so as long as you want to hold it, he's going to let you hold it. But it's until you're willing to give it up. Y'all, here's what I want to let you know. God knows everything. He knows sorrow. Because the Bible says he wept. He knows loneliness. Because at the cross he says, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? He knows what we feel. And so why not go to Jesus who knows? Hey, you sing an old song. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, no friend, Lord have mercy, can heal all diseases. No, no, no. Je but then it said, Jesus knows all about our struggles. And guess what? He will guide till the day is done. And then there's not a friend like the Lord, Lee Jesus. Somebody said, No, not one. No. Not one, cause Jesus knows all about our struggles, and He will guide till the day is done. Like the Lord, be Jesus. I said no. Oh, no. Oh. No. Not one. No. Not one. I'm going to do something today. The altar is open. The altar. You come down. You come kneel. But I want some people who got something they want to, they want to release. The altar is open. you came in Jesus name bound oppressed afflicted sick or lame for the power yeah, 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 yeah. of the Lord is still the same yeah, 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 yeah. you Like you came in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands out to your people. In the name of Jesus. Hey, hey. For God, you know. You see and you feel. And so, Father, there has been weight, there has been pain that was brought to the altar. Your word says, come boldly to the throne. And so, Father, we come boldly and we say, God, give us strength now. 
Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that God, you will let your word seep down in us, God. That we will hold tightly to that word. And Father, we will cast all of our cares upon you. For you care for us. Oh, Father, I pray now you're healed now. You're set free now. You'll deliver now. You'll give breakthrough now. God, now you're free now. For there are those, oh God, who are bound by weaknesses and by sins and the weight of this world. Free your people now. God, now I say you're touched right now. God, I thank you now. Pray for those who have, who have lost loved ones that, God, you would will, you will comfort them now, God, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, I pray for all of our sick and shut in here that, God, you would touch them even now. God, you know their name. You know their issue. And so, Father, I pray you're healed now. Not just heal some of the pain, but, God, all of the pain. Touch this church. Touch this church. Touch this church that the anointing will flow. Touch this church that healing will take place. Touch this church that clicks will be dissolved. Touch this church that we will love one another. Touch this church that this will be the church you're calling. Touch this church. The lives shall be saved. Souls shall be healed and delivered. We thank you now. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Come on, bless God and say amen.